All right, welcome back. So in the first video, we uh, put together this code to create an icing model, uh, to evolve an icing model, which is a, a lattice of, of points in 2D that evolve according to some rules. And we ended up with this nice little interactive model here, but we found that generating this, generating a new model and trying out, say, new temperatures and things like that takes a long time because we have these nested for loops one, two, three, four, five, six nested for loops. And nested for loops are really, really inefficient in Python for various reasons. So there, there's different approaches you can use for this. We could try to do this in what's known as a vectorized manner, basically using canned routines and NumPy and SciPy in order to not do these loops in Python, but actually push the loops down to C. But um, for, for this, it's not obvious how to do that because there's a lot of kind of locality type things that are going on. Um, so what I want to do today is, is show how you can use Cython to speed up this function. So Cython is kind of the, is this, um, this hybrid of C and Python that you can use to do some, some really um, fast performance things in, in Python. Um, and in the Jupyter Notebook, it, you can, uh, there's an, actually an extension um, that lets you do Cython, Cython very, oh, I don't want to, to autocomplete. It lets you do Cython very, very easily from within the notebook. Um, so what I'm going to do is start out by just copying this code. This is our icing model code right here. And I'm going to paste it right there. And just say that I want to run this through Cython. So once you've loaded the Cython extension, you can type percent percent Cython, and this will um, uh, attempt to compile this code down to C. Uh, now, first thing I get is an, is an error. Um, it's complaining that it doesn't know what NP is. So that's, that's an important thing to know. Even though I imported N NumPy as NP in the notebook up here, when you're, when you're um, compiling Cython, you need to do all the imports um, uh, in the cell because it's actually taking the content of the cell and treating it as a standalone thing. So we, we did that, and we get, we get out this... Uh, we get out a version of this code. Um, I'm going to rename this because I actually want to save the old icing step. I'm going to call this uh, Psi icing step each time. Um, and I think I overwrote this. I'm going to rerun that. Um, and let's get the Psi icing step. And, and just to see what's going on, let's, uh, let's do field equals random spin field 200 by 200. And let's time it. Let's time our ice, icing step on the field, and let's uh, time our our psi icing step on the field. So it'll take a second to do that. <coughs> and you can see that the icing step is taking about 0.33 uh, seconds, and our Cython version of the icing step is maybe about 10% faster. So that's not great right now, but it, it is interesting that by just taking this code and having Cython run through it and compile it, you end up with, uh, with just a 10% speed up. And of course, we can, we can go much farther. And um, one way that, one important thing you can do with Cython to make things faster is to tell Cython what the types of all the values are. So right now, it, it doesn't know that, for example, n is an integer. And so when um, it says this range ends n offset to n, it needs to kind of go through multiple code paths uh, to check to, depending on the type of n. So let's let's change this a little bit and let's do c def int n and c def int m uh, and we can see it say field dot shape n is field dot shape zero and n is field dot shape one. So we can copy this here because we're, we're using this down here too. Um, and we're going to go ahead and just, just add types everywhere. So cdef int total is that. Um, what is field? This is, a, this is an int colon colon. So it's a, it's a two-dimensional array. We know that. We know that this is an integer. We know that this is an integer. And we know that this is a float. And we can do the same thing up here, float that. And this is a int colon colon field. 
All right, and um, we also are using these n offset, m offset, n m. So let's do, let's just declare those here. N offset, m offset, n m. Right, and um, and uh, we have all that. What else do we need to declare? We need to do cdef uh, int i comma j, and we can do cdef float de equals that. All right. Um, yeah. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, now we can do if d equals zero, uh, field nm times equals minus one, and yeah. So that that should all work. So let's um, let's run this now. And see if I made any mistakes. So yeah, I. Um, what I do? I redeclared n, so I, I don't actually need to declare n here. I need to. This should be a little n and a little m, right? Um, yeah. Well, let's try that. And if that runs through well, then yep, that that compiled. And now let, let's see how we go. Previously, it was taking 296 milliseconds before we added the type information. And now we time it, and uh, of course I get a value error. I did something wrong, right? Um, buffer type mismatch. Expected int, but got long. Uh, so this is the weird thing. Um, what we basically said that we wanted 32-bit um, integers. We we really do want. want we're using 64-bit integers instead. Um, one way we can deal with this is if we actually use NumPy types there. So if we see import. NumPy as NP. This is kind of importing the C interface to NumPy. So let's let's call this np.int64 um, instead of uh, instead of just an int. And the same thing here. We want this to be int64. So we're we're expecting 64-bit inputs for for our data. We compile that again. Oh, what did I do wrong now? Oh yeah, int64 for the for the types. You have to do underscore t. So we want these to be int64 types. And um, now that compiles, it's running, and let's see, let's see how it does. The, the slow icing step still takes uh, 0.34 seconds or so. And our fast icing step now is down to down by about a factor of four. We're down to, down to 80 milliseconds. So th this is pretty good. We've gotten, like I said, a factor of four just by adding types to this data. Now the, the thing we can do from here um, to, to learn a little bit about what, where the slow pieces are is add this dash a flag, and that means annotate. And um, this, is, this is quite useful because if you annotate the results, what it gives you is uh, an annotated version of your code here that's, that's telling you exactly where things are slow. So um, if you click on this, you can actually see What's happening is you uh, is it's taking this Python code and converting it to this C code, and the longer the C code is, the you know the the longer it's going to take to execute. Basically, it's a good proxy for number of lines of code is a good proxy for execution time. So we're running all these lines of C code just to call that function. Um, so what can we do about that? Let's well since we don't need this function, the sci icing update. Outside of um, outside of this loop, we can just make this a C def. That'll make it instead of a Python function, it'll make it just a pure C function. That then I believe once we do that, um, once we do that, it's it's much much fewer lines of code, right? Because it knows that this is a C function. It doesn't have to do all the different contingencies of, uh, of what it is. Returning field takes a little bit. So we we've gotten this first icing step really really fast like this this defining our integer n is basically just taking this field dot shape zero and putting it in a variable a typed variable so so this function is really really fast let's take a look at where the the other slow things might be um, so for example this is slow right here total plus equals field i percent n um, we'll get to why that's slow in, in just a little bit um, this is uh, field n m times total. We're, I think, I think we're kind of, kind of doing our best, uh, doing, doing pretty close to our best right there. Um, but if you look down, down here, this part is really, really slow. 
And what's going on there is that we're actually calling this this numpy exp function. And the numpy x fun function is a Python function. We're also calling numpy rand, and and the rand is is a Python function. So it's it's really quite slow. So one thing we can do here is um, use use Cython versions, or basically like raw C versions of these functions. So for example, you do from libc.math import x. So instead of using numpy's exp function, we can use just um, the, the C exp function. And the other thing we can do is if we wanna if we wanna get the random numbers um, just in, in raw C, we can actually use uh, from libc dot standard line import rands. And what, what the rand function does is it actually gives you a number between zero and some maximum, and that maximum is um, uh, it's in this uh, limits.h, and we can do um, int rand max. Um, so this, this rand function will give us a number between zero and rand max. So instead of numpy.random.rand, let's just do rand divided by rand underscore max. And of course, I uh, don't want to do capitals there. OK, let's see if that works. Um, it's, actually, it's actually compiling. That's a good sign. And oh, module not found. What did I do? No module named libc. Um, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I'm not, I don't want to import these things. I want to C import these things because I'm importing C functions into Cython rather than Python functions. So that compiles, and let's see how we're doing now. Yeah, so this is, this is much, much faster here, it looks like. Um, it's still saying, well, rand max might be zero, and in that case, it's doing some other things. You know what, what we could do to speed that up is, um, instead of dividing by rand max here, we'll just do some algebra and put it on the other side of the, the equality. We'll multiply our DE by rand max and see if it's greater than rand. So we can, we can compile that again. Again, with the Cython minus A, it's running that and getting this out. So now we have a, a very fast way of doing this doing this. It's basically one line of C to do this check right here. Cool, so let, let's see how much that bought us, just getting rid of those um, calls to Python and using pure C functions instead. Uh, that got us down another factor of maybe 20, so now we're, now we're 100 times faster than the native Python implementation. So just by adding some types, um, some manipulating some things to use to use C values instead of Python values. So what else can we do? There's there's still a few things here, and one thing if you look if you look at any time we're indexing an array in Cython, um, it's doing all these checks, these unlikely if this is less than zero, unlikely if this is greater than greater than the shape. So essentially, what that's saying is that it's it's doing um, bounds checking on array indexes, and we don't necessarily need that, right? Because we've if if we did this correctly, this n and m, and this i percent m and j percent m. That, this should never, these values should never be less than zero or greater than um, the, the shape of the, of the array. So this is where things get a little bit dangerous, but we can, um, dangerous in the sense that if we mess up, we can cause uh, an error that's outside of Python, like a, like a segmentation fault or something like that. But we can tell Cython that we don't want it to do these kinds of bounds checks. And the way that you do that is you C import Cython, and you can do cython.bounds check false. So we don't want it to check that our array index and uh, check if our array indices are out of bounds. And we want um, cython.wraparound false. So what, what wraparound false does is it basically um, says you can't use negative index indices in your arrays and expect, expect them to work. You're using C style indices where you, you can't go negative. So if we run that, what we get out is something that's much, much faster. So now you can see that we're um, we're still we still have this, it's checking if N and M are, are 
equal to zero because we're dividing by them, so that's all right. But um, these, these indexing things right here are much, much faster. They don't have to do conditional checks on, on, the, in, on the array to make, or on the index to make sure it's in bounds and things like that. So now if we run this, let's see, let's see how well we've done overall. So 0.33 um, seconds and, and about two and a half milliseconds for, for doing our Cython version of this. So this is super cool. We've, we've uh, got a factor of maybe 200 improvement just by doing these Cython things. And um, I should mention that Cython is really, really well battle tested and really mature. If you've used NumPy or Pandas or Scikit-Learn or SciPy or packages like that, they're using Cython internally. So they're doing this kind of stuff to optimize their Python code. So um, now what we can do is let's, let's take a look at um, what things look like with this faster version of the code. I'm going to, instead of appending an icing step, I'm going to append psi icing step. And <laughs> what do we do? Get that, get that immediately. Um, uh, I got something wrong. Field plus one. Oh, this is this is one thing. So since I since I typed uh, this, this is an int sixty four. This is actually a a, mem a memory buffer type and not an numpy array type. So I since we're using the, the output, I'm going to turn that into a numpy array instead. And um, that sh shouldn't slow things down much because it only happens once each frame. So that, that happens, that computes almost immediately now, right? So we can see what this looks like. What, what this means is we can, we can go up to 100 frames of, say, 500 by 500 and um, do this much, much more quickly. You know, that, that would have taken minutes with our old code. We got that essentially instantly. So you, you, start with, you start with random noise, and then as time goes on, it evolves into this kind of macroscopic structure. And the, the cool thing here is that if you... If you change the beta, so our beta equals 0 0.4 is the default. Beta, like I said, is inverse temperature. So if you have a if you have a higher temperature, so let's let's make beta, beta lower by a factor of two. So we have a very high temperature. Then you can see that things um, there's a lot more random noise. Basically, the bits can flip by random much more easily, and you you get to a different steady state than if you have a lower temperature, right? If I go even lower, you'll see that we we barely get beyond the noise. Um, so there's there's so much there, there's so much noise here. There's so much uh, at the at the high temperature. So many of these bits can flip that you don't even get this sort of structure. So if we go back to beta equals zero point four. So th this is the this is at the medium temperature. You actually get this. Uh, what's known as a phase transition going out to uh, to different structured things. If we go if we go really high, you can see this is a very low temperature, so there's very small chance of actually getting a, a bit flip, and you get this very clean phase transition thing here. So um, I, I'd uh, encourage you if you're interested in this to read up on icing models. They're they're kind of fun. It's a it's a fun model of how things work um, sort of stochastically in, in statistical mechanics. But hopefully this example showed you a little bit about what you can do to, um, to optimize slow Python code using Cython. Now, once you're used to it, it might take 15 or 20 minutes to, to add types and things like that. And what you end up with is, is a much, much faster approach to um, much, much faster algorithm for looping over arrays and doing these sorts of operations. So you can start to do, um, do numerical simulations and sci scientific simulations really quickly. All right, thanks so much for, um, for watching. If you look in the comments, I'm gonna post this notebook or some version of this notebook um, probably on my blog. So you can read that there. And um, thanks so much for listening.